far from Pal and uh, Chicago Square. I'll just turn this off here a sec. Yeah, we'll just yeah, so, oh, it was midsummer here yesterday. Like, I didn't uh, have the obligatory Swedish skin full of schnapps. <laughs> <laughs> this is a serious all nighter, right? I, no, I came home early. I, I, I was, I've been really tired and quite stressed out. So I, I kind of, uh, Johanna and the kids. Johanna was playing in the band and what have you, but I didn't stay for the live music. I, um, I'm, I've been hearing the rehearsals all week anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I interest rate rises. Fucking hell. I, the cluelessness of or the misleadingness then because I, I i don't believe everybody's clueless um but jesus I, I it's driving me nuts really i i'm uh you know what what if you put up interest rates inflation doesn't go down rental inflation goes up and it transfers wealth from people who have physical assets to those that control the financial assets in the economy i'm just doing a blog at the moment i've, I've started a new one called the Do going direct paradigm blog around with the mind map and stuff um and I've discovered a new book, actually. Have you heard of the book Momo, M-O-M-O, -M -O, German novel from 1973? By a guy, it's by a guy called Michael Wend, Michael End, rather, and, and uh, he wrote The Never Ending Story, which is quite a big Disney film. And he mm. was really pissed about the film because he, he think, you know, he basically said he didn't stick to the original book or whatever, and they only did the first half of it. They're making a remake of Momo, apparently, at the moment. Um, or it's, you know, uh, according to the Wikipedia article. But I've downloaded it to have a, a read and I found the 1986 film of it, which uh, is very interesting. But you it's basically... Did you about the film of Momo or The Never Ending yeah. Story? Which no, one? the film of Momo. Momo. M Momo's much more obscure and probably much more important. Um, but I, I, I reread the chapter in The Money Syndrome um about how interest rates are, are a wealth transfer mechanism basically from the bottom of society to the top even for people who don't own any money the pricing component of interest is is just uh it's uh it's in everything it's ubiquitous across the the whole of what we need to to survive what we need to consume to survive and that's what momo is about but but it casts the money lenders as the gray men and the gray men are the stealers of time and this is this is kreutz's point charging interest is stealing time it's uh it's it's all i can say is absolutely true um and and so I mean I've been putting together quite a big blog, but I um, in the run up to the expected rate increase by quarter of a percent, which is completely unnecessary, I started looking at this stuff. Um, but the the anger, the righteous anger against Bailey doing the work of the grey men. Um, is suppressed by the algorithms. You know, Google doesn't let you be angry. I wrote quite an angry, acerbic, satirical bit, borrowing some dialogue from um, Paul Foote's article about the bottom problem. He went to Shrewsbury and, and uh, <laughs> when he was there. Um, are you, talking about, are you but, talking about people's efforts to bugger him? I'm talking about uh, the headmaster who, who died, um, who went to Eton. He'd been at Shrewsbury and basically he abused boys. He, he used to like right. uh, seeing their bare bottoms. Right. And, and Paul wrote this article about it. He previously uh, published an article about King Cora Boys Home, 
which of course is but the big scandal in Northern yeah. Ireland. Um, and of course, this ingrained sadism in the breed. The breed is a chapter of uh, Jeremy Clarkson's novel, uh, not novel, his book, The English, which is a really good book. I've said that before. It really is a very good book. Um, and it it's what I'm calling uh, the current administration in Downing Street is Sunak's Whig Junto. Clearly, they're not conservatives. What are they? They're Whigs. And it's the Whigs that introduced the Bank of England and the financialization of the economy, blah, blah, blah. Um, so effectively, the, the Whigs were uh, the the barons, the robber barons, the aristocracy or whatever. And, and this the idea that the uh, the barons would keep the and the king in balance or whatever. Um, and constitutionally, the monarchy is supposed to protect the people from the barons. Now, this if there's a, a merge of the barons and the monarchy, that's fascism. Um, this, you know, this is this is Churchill's antecedents, isn't it? Marlborough it was with the Whigs, I think. But yeah. Well, is it, you know, Blenheim, Blenheim Palace, that type of thing. It's all that sort of uh, Whigs. Yeah. 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 Well, and is it glorious revolution as well? If, 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 if you read about the Whig Junto, the Whig Junto enabled and put in place the Bank of England, and it was a process started under Cromwell's watch. And so William the Third, or the Prince of Orange, um, uh, was was basically financed by the Dutch money interests, and the Bank of Amsterdam came over to England. William Patterson is credited with the suggestion, um, yeah. but effectively that that is as described by Carol Quigley in Tragedy and Hope, and he explains the th the financialized thinking, the thinking of banks, but bankers, international bankers who want to own bonds, they want to base money on uh, a fixed unit so that it, it, it's deflationary. Bankers want deflation. So and, 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 and Quigley describes the paradoxes be between what the bankers really want and the compromise they have to make in the, in the short term to get what they want in the long term. And that, that then feeds back into my own work on why a carbon, uh, a carbon based, carbon debt based currency is inflationary. It's the new carbon gold standard. Um, and um, so. Oh, so sorry. Are you saying that they are you saying that they therefore have to accept that thing that is inflationary, which they don't want anything inflationary, but they have to accept that as part of the bigger game? It's not fixed in time, okay? All of this is, it's on shifting sands. So uh -huh. Martin Schubert says the monetary system of the economy controls the direction, the direction of control, the direction of society, right? So it's a real crude mechanism, but things are headed in the general direct direction. And the direction which the, um, the new aristocracy wants is to go back to a digital feudalism, a digital based feudalism based on central bank digital currencies and identity passports, right? Um, and the looking at a snapshot, right, Bailey's put up interest rates, he said that's to bring down inflation. And a bunch of housing commentators are saying, oh, great, maybe that's good. Maybe we should get away from being bothered about homes as assets. Right. Yeah. Now. Uh, and that's a huge packet, a, a huge subject then to unpack. And it it, it, it it takes a long time to unpack it. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do that in a blog at the moment, but it, it's. Um, it's not that the subject in itself is difficult. It's peeling all the layers that have been put around it to make it deliberately obscure, deliberately obtuse, right? And um, I mean, 
you know that that's really hard to do you know um it's that old thing you know if i had more time i would have written a shorter letter i mean it, it really is hard to um to take a whole bunch of se separate subjects that have been separated out and to give an overarching view of that framework as it's constituted constituted and and, and 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 the importance of different ones now with the system that we've had which is good cop bad cop which is you've got the government charging taxes and the banks producing the token within which, which those taxes have to be paid in you see um and then so you have people like richard murphy he thinks the answer to all this is to tax the rich right well, actually, it isn't because the basis of the monetary system means that the the very wealthy, the very rich, the the plutocrats, the autocrats, the uh, the ruling class will always remain rich, simply because the system is designed to fill to 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 send the money straight back up to the top. And this has been known about for ages. Uh, Roy Rogers, the comedian in the 30s, he's sort of, you know, his famous quote about um, trickle up. You know, there's no the trickle down economics is, is, is a perverse absurdism on what actually happens. What happens is trickle up, always trickle up. That's the point. Now, Helmuth Kreutz, in his book, The Money Syndrome, really gets into this stuff and this is how i found this momo novel today because it's kind of a it's a passing reference um and of course you know as you go back i, I might mean, often follow up footnotes but this is one i hadn't missed now and this 1973 film is very good i, I will read the novel sort of you know I've, 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 read, I've, I've got it on my screen here at the moment um but boy oh boy it, it's the the work that has been done on simple in summarizing these things is excluded by the algorithms of Google. So don't be evil. It's evil. Google is evil. It's got over 80 percent of the Internet. It's a monopoly and monopolies are the problem. Famous Lord Act can quote, you know, the, 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 the eventually it boils down to the people against the banks that's the the enduring problem of monopoly and so on the first point about bankers like deflation um well industrial capitalists and bankers mark said um that the roving cavaliers of capitalism the money changers lenders whatever occasionally despoiled the industrial capitalists, right? Well, the financial capitalists are now in bed with the government and you've got state monopoly capitalism. Now, what monopolies do is they support prices by artificial scarcity, right? Now, what's happening in the housing market at the moment is that the um, the rented housing stock in private hands is being lined up for looting for monopoly landlord people set up by Lloyds and BlackRock and, you know, people in the club, as it were. OK, so that's going to take place. Uh, but also um, at the margins, people will be pick, picked up, uh, picked up uh, off because the overall level of home ownership is headed down. So the Whig junta of, of Rishi Sunak is not in favour of a home owning democracy, right? Now, is a home owning democracy a good idea if you want to be a an autocratic authoritarian regime? Well, actually, it isn't. And so what's going to happen is people's rental will become tied to behaviour and social points, which effectively is what serfs were. They were tied to the land right restrictions in movement the whole bit i mean it's a framework for feudalism joel Kotkin wrote 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 a book about feudalism which we've talked about before um it's um i i'm i'm just listening to a clip when you rang um 
which is the cl clip from Goodwill Hunting. Um, here's the quote. Look, of course, that's your contention. You're a first year grad student. You just got finished reading some Marxian historian, Pete Garrison, probably. You're going to be convinced of that till next month when you get to James Lemon. And then you're going to be talking yeah. about how the economies of Virginia and Pennsylvania were entrepreneurial and capitalist way back in 1740. That's going to last until next year when you're going to be in here regurgitating Gordon Wood talking about, you know, the pre-revolutionary utopia and the capital forming effects of military mobilization. Wood drastically, Wood drastically underestimates the impact of social distinctions predicated upon wealth, especially inherited wealth. Got that from Vickers, work in Essex County, page 98, right? Yeah, right. Now, that's the quote from the film. Now, if you read the work in Essex County, it's the subscript of that is is to do with um, debt slavery. Um, so basically, it's sort of saying that white immigrants, even in, in the northern uh, counties, were, were still in slavery. It was a debt slavery. OK, and, and that's what this is all about. So. Um, Selling off council houses, the idea of that in a Thatcherite sense was people with a mortgage don't go on strike because they've got to pay their mortgage. If you have security of tenure, OK, in a council house, you could go on strike as much as you liked because, you know, people didn't get evicted from social housing. Well, with for profit social housing, you will have that over your head all the time. The security of tenure. Now, if you own your own house outright, You've got that secure security of knowing that you can be there, right? Come what may. But of course, the the, the undermining of of, of 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 the institution of private personal property is something which the the WF have said it. You'll owe nothing and be happy. Well, you know, you'll be a happy slave as long as you take your soma. That's the brave new world. Um, and you'll pretend to be happy if you're in the 1984 part of the precariat. Otherwise. Um, you know, how many fingers am I holding up? It's four. And if you don't say four, it's the old electric shock treatment, you know. So uh, that, that, that's, um, you know, the Richard Burton scene in, in, in the modern 1984, where, where John Hurt is in the, you know, basically being re-educated or whatever. And the, these themes are in this Momo film. Um, it's, it, 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 it's, as always, people who read always say the book is better. I, I haven't read it yet. Like I said, I've got it on my screen, so I will have a read later. Um, but but uh, uh, yeah, Bernard Latier's old websites dis disappeared off the web. <coughs> um, someone has hijacked the domain and they've got bits of it that they want to do and they're passing it off more or less as their own work. Um, but Helmut Kruf, Kruf, it's no one's really ever heard of him anyway. Uh, and uh, Money Syndrome is in English now, but it's because, you know, he's, he's fairly well known in Germany. And Momo, the, the novel and the, the film was originally in German, but it's been overdubbed. It was a joint German-Italian production. There was an opera produced. Again, I found some clips of that. Uh, that was done in Denmark by the Royal Danish Opera. Um, you know, the it's it, 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 it's it is driving me nuts, Ranjan. It really is. I mean, the, the, the document I put out at the beginning of COVID and all the rest of it, understanding affordable housing and all the rest of it. What, one of the chapters in that is the money syndrome and talking about how if you put up interest rates, rents go up. It's inflationary uh, uh, and they're claiming they're claiming up is down. That's what Bailey is doing. But of course, Bailey will do that because he's a stooge for the Sunak Whig junto. It, 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 there's a direct line uh, between from the Whig junto right up to Sunak's current cabinet. Do, do now, you remember, whether they do know you that remember, they're at all, at do all you of the press is another thing. Most Bailey, people do think to realise it. Do you remember when Bailey came in? Mm. Do you remember what the date was? The date, I don't remember the specific date, no. His first day on the job, I believe, would have been the 1st of April 2020. Oh, right, mm. okay. That's it, cool, it might have been the 1st of March, but I think it was the 1st of April. And I remember because he comes in and on day one, on the front page of the FT, 
They say Bailey has overseen the coordination of liquidity injections by the Bank of Japan and everyone else. You know, they, they made it look like he was kind of overseeing, as you said in our last call right at the beginning, uh, the biggest creation of capital ever. So like that, the. Um, um, so he he was he was he did it on day one. Yeah. Day one of his tenure. Uh, uh, it, it, it is obvious what's going on. Um, and of course, the the breadcrumbs leading away from the scene of the crime, you know, all lead back to Andrew Bailey. You're, talking, you're not talking to, about Hansel and Gretel, are you? Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, we're on German fairy tales. We may as well yeah. sort of get stuck in. But yeah, I mean, it, it, it's yeah, because of course Gove has piped up. He's having a go about developers land banking, and well, again, who, that, did, that, who, that, did, who did who did Gove employ for six months? I, I'm, I assume lots of people. Andy Haldane. Do you remember oh, when Andy okay. Haldane when when Haldane left the bank? He left the bank, the Bank of England. And he was going to become head of the Royal Society of Arts. But when he started, Gove said, would you mind uh, overseeing our levelling up plans for six months? Mm. Uh, to which Haldane, being a man of public service, etc., said, yeah, sure, no problem. Yeah. Now, I think he must have, re must have produced a report. And maybe he's part of the reason why Gove is apparently more reasonable than the rest on this topic. I, I ain't buying that. I don't think Gove is more reasonable. I really don't. I, well, uh, I'm, not, um, I'm not saying he is, but, you know, some people say he is. Look, so what's, so tell, too, can you tell I'll me take, the bad stuff about Gove then? G Gove is too intelligent a man not to know this, OK? Right? He's <laughs> a real bright spark. I mean, you know, he's a lot brighter than Rishi, Rishi Sunak. I mean, Rishi Sunak is an absolute fucking idiot. But Gove is not an idiot. G Gove is a very, very clever man. Right. What, what what he's had is an ethics bypass, unfortunately. You know, I mean, if you wanted an intellect on your side, you want Gove on your side because he's a clever bloke. There's there's no two ways about it, you know. Um, and therefore, um, he's either gone past this because he doesn't want to know the answer or he knows the answer and, 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 and is, is, is pushing another line of argument to distract from the real purpose here. And, you know, I, you know, I'd love to have dinner, dinner or lunch with Gove and have a good chat with him because, you know, I mean, I, whether he would be truthful or not is, is, a, is another, you know, matter altogether. Um, but uh, all this stuff is there to be, it, it, it's, it's on repeat, it's on fucking repeat, you know, I mean, it, it's, and, and of course, you know, I remember the early 90s uh, adjustment. I remember the dot-com bubble adjustment. Obviously, I remember 2008. And obviously, this this current one and uh, what's been happening since the repo spoke in 2019, it's all part of a piece. Now, the, the other bit there is the Ukraine war. And what's that's been now? Years ago, I think I've got it off my screen. Here it is. Look, right. This is a paper from the early 80s, okay, which was published online by uh, Cambridge University Press, okay, uh, on the 13th of June 2011, okay. It's in World Politics, Volume 35, Issue 4, July 83. Right, so it's by Karen Rasler and William R. Thompson. Here's the abstract. The explanation of the rise and fall of the world system leading powers in terms of uneven economic development tends to overlook the role of the creation and management of public credit and national debts. Prior to 1815, the Netherlands and Great Britain owed a significant proportion of their respective victories over the larger and wealthier states of Spain and France to the development of competitive financial capabilities. Winning, however, leads to higher absolute debt burdens, which prior to 40, 1945 encouraged post-war reductions in governmental expenditures. 
In this fashion, world leaders have contributed to the erosion of their preponderant capability positions before the emergence of international rivals. These ideas are elaborated within the context of, of, of George Medelsky's long cycle of world leadership theory and through a brief review of war related financial problems between 1500 and 1815 and the consequent development of national debts. Longitudinal analysis of British and American public debt data provides collaborating empirical support. Right now, I, I can't, I, I'm not a member of an institution, so I can't get access to that article. And I've looked Send on LibGem, all the rest of it isn't there. What is on LibGem, though, uh, is this other paper. Uh, right, so. Global War on the Political Economy of Structural Change by Carol, Karen Razzle and William R. Thompson. Now, this is the book that that article came from. Um, uh, long term economic growth. Printing national blah, 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 blah. Um, now, th there's actually a, a shorter paper than that as well that I've got. Open so here. let me just get this right. Carol Razzle and William Thompson are saying that it is Britain and Holland's debt system that has allowed them to beat their rivals, but it means that they don't spend enough at home. Uh, well, what, what it means is it, 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 it's the old guns and butter thing. Swords and plowshares, you know, um, that, that in terms of in terms of consumption at home, OK, all that anyone needs to know about that is Calvin's um, dictum, the poor must remain poor so that they remain obedient. OK, it's straight out of uh, uh, unconditional election, Calvinism 101, that is right. So that's a quote from Stiglitz-Arlenger in Lost Science of Money. Unconditional election, is that his book? Uh, unconditional election is a doctrine of the Calvinist Church to do with the unconditionally elected, i.e. the chosen. And, and so these are things that Cromwell believed in. It's a, Puri it's a Puritan concept, uh, which also says that free will doesn't exist. OK, they deny free will. Um, and these, these are the same yeah. people. These, these are the same people. Is this correct that Cromwell, during his period, they got rid of the laws against usury, so they brought usury back. Uh, well, they were implicated in the Bank of England starting off, even though it was the Whigs that brought it in, and and and, and that was post the Restoration. I, the thing is, you see, it's, the way history works, it isn't about one date; it's about a general direction of flow. Yeah, and and, and so. Um, how you start something off and the tools then you have to use to finish it when you've got a long term different. objective, OK, okay. Um, means that it gets very, very messy. It, it's called scholarship, Ranjan, and it means people have to read. And you have to look hmm. at conflicting explanations of the same information. And because it's humanities, it, 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 it's not it's not science. You can't do an experiment and repeat the experiment and then claim empirical proof that ain't how that isn't how life works that's you know uh it's certainly not how the economy works and, and trying to 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 take the algorithms developed for physics and use them in financial markets is pure idiocy i mean i've got a video up at the moment of a guy talking about newton's laws and all the fucking rest of it it's someone used to work in the in the bond markets who was very good about the effect of what was happening on the band, bond markets on banks and all the rest of it. But fuck me, when he started talking about um, Newton's Come laws on, as man. it applies to um, um, I'm gonna interest rate rises now, it, it's it, it, it's risible, absolutely risible. And, and this is the problem with these people that, that you know, I mean, they couldn't find their own arsehole with, with both hands and a mirror. They just couldn't. Not, you know, <laughs> absolute fucking morons. And, it, and these are the people we're supposed to look up to as ex, experts. But there we are. So I, I, 
I, I'm really angry. I've got to say, I mean, I, I, I am really angry because it's clear that this government, the Sanuk Junto's policy is for demand destruction and for wealth uh, transfer and what wealth they can't get their hands on, they want to destroy. Um, and it's it's all about power and it's all to do with um, it, it's all to do with centralizing global fascism. I mean, it, it really is looking to um, all the shit that Hitler stood for. Right. These people are putting into play, including the EU. So th there's a very good um, talk that was done by Rowan Atkinson's brother. Um, whatever he's called. Um, oh, what's his name? Anyway, it, it, he's got a good handle on all of this stuff. He's not um, called Dan, is he? He's not called Dan. No. Hold on. Um, Oh, now, right. now, Roger, oh. I was just wondering if at some stage I might interject. You go for it, Ren Jen. I've said my bit. I'm like I say, I've got steam coming out of my ears. I'm so pissed off about all this shit. You also have horns appearing off the top of your head as well. Uh, <laughs> um, OK, well, um, I don't know if you had time. I sent you a link. Um, I couldn't quite tell if it was oh, true. Oh, I, I saw ask... this is about spying on journalists. Yeah, I had to actually ask my students if they if they believed what I believed to have been the case. But so you get Pegasus and Predator, these Israeli spyware uh, programs, which are designed mm. to whoever uses it can know everything that's going on in your phone. All you need is to receive a missed call and mm -hmm. everything in your phone is revealed to whoever's done this. And they were using it on opposition uh, and activists in Hungary and Poland, they say, certainly in Mexico. Um, and I was at a talk a few months ago and I said to the Guardian people there, um, do you really think that in a country of spy cops, they wouldn't have used this on people like Jeremy Corbyn, you know, on the, on the left opposition? But to be to you know to not get too much hate, I said, or do you think people in Britain don't consider this to be a serious story? And then the guy just said, "Oh yeah, in America they'd be more concerned about that, but not in Britain. <laughs> in Britain we don't want to know about that shit." <laughs> so I, I, I just left it. But then um, the story itself, it said that you're not allowed to have spyware on your phone, but France have said that they would like an exception. Uh, in the case of, I think they said terrorism or some other shit, but they're now saying they want all journalists to have spyware on their phones and their laptops so that any source, if the government deems it necessary, they can know exactly where the information comes from. Uh, I said this to 16-year-olds in my class, Italian 16-year-olds, that is wrong. And I wanted to find out, if you know, I assume they meant, you know, we believe that is morally wrong. We don't believe that that would ever happen. And I couldn't tell if the French exception meant that they wanted it to happen everywhere except France. And that's not what it was. It was France wants everyone in Europe to be subjected to that. Then I looked at the comment section in the Times. Someone comes in and says, brilliant to no longer be involved in this police state, you know, meaning, you know, after Brexit. And the first reply came in saying, you obviously have not read the online harms bill, which is far yeah. worse than what, than what you're reading about. Apparently, in the online harms bill, we will all have spyware. I remember hearing also that we won't be allowed to use VPNs. If you use a yeah. VPN, you're going to be a criminal. Like this yeah. type of shit. Yeah, Ray, Ray so Jen, I it think all stems very... from that, that report, Cyber Solarium, where they get their knickers in a real s s a twist about end to end encryption. And end to end encryption, Starmer wants to ban it, they all want to ban it. And basically, um, yeah. effectively, they want to spy on all citizens and they want basically the naughty step or the gulag, the digital gulag, the whole thing. It is here. These people, OK, are all they're, they're fascists. 
And this, I is, mean, this, it, is, it, this is actually linked to your interest rate thing that you're talking about as well, isn't it? Because you were saying that by controlling people's behaviour, that, that will also affect ownership levels and stuff like that. Listen, the poor what, will be poor. What it is, it, it, is that the modern state, both the corporate part of it, so this is the corporate monopolies, and the state with its monopoly on power and, 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 and oversight of the law, whatever, the judiciary is supposed to be independent of the, the the legislature that's no longer the case right now that it, in our constitution it, it should be the case but it was undermined by the introduction of the um supreme court a supreme, we used to have the house of law yeah. the supreme court which it was to get us in line with european law that was a blairite introduction okay it yeah. underlines the constitution of the constitution separation of the uh, legislative from the uh, judiciary and habeas corpus okay those two things okay are are fundamental to the liber liberties of, of, of every British subject okay and we've got to you know we're, we're subjects of King Charles the third it's right? all gone now right all constitutionally gone. constitutionally under that we're rather better off than European citizens or French citizens or citizens but, but hold on, hold on, hold on, in hold on, republics under Roman law. You say constitutionally and you say we would be, but all of this shit has disappeared now, hasn't it? Isn't that no, your point? This is, the, this is, this is the in point, reality. Is that it, it's the law hasn't changed. What's yeah, happened is, is the is operation there. of the law with the people at the levers of power. OK, but it, it's fundamentally flawed and doesn't it doesn't stand yeah. up legally. It's been done illegally. This is the point. Yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah but, but so right now, it's, it's, right it's, now it's we're not going to get safe, safe decisions. We don't get safe decisions now. That's the point. That's my point. Yes, exactly. But this Rodney Atkinson, this this guy here. Again, I only came across him the other day. It, and this is this is the internet filter. I, I've been studying this stuff seriously for over thirteen years. It must be getting on for fifteen years now. Okay, um, and um, monetary reform, a lot of this constitutional stuff, uh, and. What's left on the internet is stuff they just haven't managed to remove yet. Okay, um, but but you know the the, the 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 in terms of the tightening of the screw, you had the big six two thousand and sixteen purge. Then you had another purge during COVID, or or you know there was two thousand sixteen, two thousand eighteen, then the COVID one, and they're about to have another one, and 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 they're trying to normalise. Uh, they're trying to normalise a police state is what they're trying to do. Uh, uh, and it isn't normal. It's not acceptable. Um, and I mean, I'm really angry about it. I think other people should be angry about it. Um, but the the answer of the digital gulag is, well, be a good lad. Take, 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 take your soma. Take your soma. You know, and, and Uncle Andrew, he's not really abusing you. Un Uncle Andrew is your friend, you know. He's doing you a favour by fondling your buttocks. That's, you know, that that that's what these degenerate, corrupt, fascist perverts, you know, they're perverting our, our justice. They're, 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 you know, they're preying on, um, on innocence. It's it's wicked. It's absolutely wicked. The, the, I mean, these people are, I, you know, I, I don't know if you heard the clip the other day, a woman challenging um, Trudeau in Canada saying, you know, what you've been doing is treason. And, you know, you know what the, the punishment for treason used to be in Canada. You know, the traditional punishment for, for treason is various forms of capital punishment. Um, but to be honest, with a lot of these people, I would happily pull the trigger myself. I'm so angry with them. Um, and uh, after after due process, after due process, and, and with them having proper legal representation, <laughs> all the rest of it, uh, you know, lampposts are too good for these people. They 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 need to be properly dispatched 
with the full force of the constitutional <laughs> legal um, legal due process. Really, I, I'm I'm that angry. I mean, I, I, I I'm incredible. I'm spitting feathers at these people. Um, there was this other story about um, the Baroness. Have you seen the story about the thirty-year-old Baroness? And, oh, and, all uh, of that, yeah. I mean, it's. It, I know it's a very, very what small. What they're doing thing. Is, is they are making a spectacle, making a show of, undermining, and generally um, uh, they're trivialising the institutions which were have been put in place over centuries to protect our constitutional rights and, and a good way of doing that is is you know of course you devalue an institution like the the house of lords by putting a a 30 year old know nothing um spad into the house of lords of course blair started that process off as well you know all the political well, it's, 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 that's that's what it's about ranjan they are wrecking the institutions which are which were put in place and if were properly run according to the founding principles of these institutions that they... well, it's interesting it's interesting that you say that it's Blair because then what's happening now is then the telegraph will put these other things the telegraph which is bankrupt will say things like a starmer plans to flood the lords with labor lords uh, to get his way uh, as soon as possible the other story that was interesting was um, the Telegraph. Obama, story. Blair, Cameron, you, there's no difference between these people. They, me, they are, Roger, you know, it's a Roger, unique party. Roger, we, let, we, me, we let me just tell you two things. One party fascist state. Sure. Let me tell you two things, two, two particular stories. Um, the, so in the case between the Virgin Islands and J.P. Morgan, they have bringing it, been bringing out lots of correspondence. So they've brought out some of the correspondence between Epstein and Peter Mandelson, or <laughs> more to the point, actually, it's between Epstein and Jess Daly, in which Mandelson is mentioned, and even Jamie Dimon gets mentioned. So they've been saying that Mandelson stayed at Epstein's house in New York when Epstein was in prison uh, for soliciting minors and cross state lines and things like that basically sex trafficking and um so mandelson stayed at his whilst he was business minister also mandelson apparently arranged meetings with um uh, staley between state no epstein arranged meetings between staley and mandelson tried to get darling involved as well uh, and darling has denied all of this so all of that stuff came out and then afterwards the telegraph apparently i think asked Starmer, is Mandelson still someone who you're happy to take advice from? With all of this stuff out there, and Starmer apparently said yes. Um, so no naughty step for, for Mandelson, for, you know, despite all of this shit. So that's one thing. And then the other thing that was quite interesting was that whilst all of that was happening, then at the same time, a story came out on the FT, and it was right next to it in the feed. And this was Robert Shrimley. Uh, who's quite big at the FT, and he basically said, you know what, Johnson supposedly having his opportunity to go away now is one thing, but let us not pretend that Tony Blair ever went away. And it basically said the Tony Blair Institute is the government's go-to think tank for everything. It's overtaken all of the other think tanks. It's like the other think tanks uh, are just talking shops compared to the Tony Blair Institute, where whatever it says just fucking happens. That's the vibe I got from this article. So it's quite interesting the way in which that whole Mandelson thing happening and how he just doesn't have to pay any price for any of what he's done. And then yeah, and the Campbell's time, uh, on question and, yeah. time and all the rest of it. Well, here's the thing, you know, the BBC are, are fully paid up members of this fascist cabal. You know, it's, mm. it's, let's 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 call it what it is. You know, it 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 it, it is basically. The propaganda arm of, 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 of a fascist Whig junto, and and 
you know, Blair is the biggest wig of the lot, you know. Uh, mm. I, it, it, it's, it's beyond parody, really. I mean, it's hard to laugh about this stuff, even though some of it is patently absurd. But, I, you know, I've, geez, I, I'm just finding it hard to laugh at it at the moment. So it's, at this point, it's just so... And Pettifer, I saw her, um, she, she, she commented on Bailey's uh, interest. She, she said it's basically uh, uh, monetary policy sadism. You know, I mean, I, of course, I would like to ask her how she thinks all this green shit she's into doesn't actually amount to uh, sadism as well. Um, you know, I guess she'd say, well, that's good sadism, you know, a little bit of sadism of the right sort is actually OK. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Well, so, I mean, but that's, but, but that's all coming from the same place, isn't it? Obviously. I mean, what's his name? Bailey, he was on the front page of the paper the other day. He's at the Net Zero conference. You know, he's he's. He's, he's talking all about all of this stuff and he's Mark doing it for the next trotting around. He's Mark Carney's the new Michael Bloomberg in, in terms of all this green shite. John Kerry. They're, they're all nuts. They're all mad. They're fanatics. Bill Gates, he's nuts. He's a fanatic. You know, the, the, these are not level-headed, um, reasonable people. They are fanatics. Richard Attenborough, or David Attenborough rather, he's a fanatic. That they are completely and utterly out to lunch with the bloody fairies. They're extremists. Yeah. Oh well, they're doing a fucking good job, though, aren't they? Ah, uh, well, my own theory I mean, we're, about we're talking, is, talking about them. Uh, about you them. know, they've, they've got a lot of influence. Well. I, a problem. One of the things I'm grateful for is is that they, they are stood on the shoulders of giants, if you like. And I think, you know, uh, David Rockefeller, when he died, I mean, Soros, he's going to be popping off fairly soon. Anyone that thinks Soros's son is going to be nearly as effective as old Georgie boy has got another thing coming. And so I, I think what what I take some um, some comfort from the fact that the degree of nepotism and inbreeding uh, that, that has continued with these people means that we're, we're, we're not dealing with the A-team anymore. That, and the A-team has slowly but surely been dying out. Um, and so from that point of view, um, I, I, I think these people will ultimately be um, uh, defeated not least that they, 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 they're they so up their own backsides, they don't realise the inheritance that's been handed down to them. This is why they score so many own goals, you see. So, you know, of course, when Kissinger pops off and all the rest of it, um, you know, so, so the generation of people who brought the uh, PNAC the new American century or whatever, a lot of those people have died. You know, people like Caspar Weinberger, Lord Carrington, you know, people like him. I had lunch with him once a long time ago. But the, 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 um, that generation, um, the, the current generation, it's all book learning for them. They, 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 they're, they're, they're not innovators. They're, they're not creative or anything like that. They, they're, they're the sort of rubbish you get um, with this sort of system. Um, so, uh, like I say, I mean, they, they, they are screwing up royally and will continue to do so. It, it, it's just unfortunate that, that we've all got to pay the price in the meantime for their indulgences. Um, but there you go. I mean, that that that's my own view. We, 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 you know, lions and donkeys, it was ever thus. Are you around later or should we maybe catch up tomorrow? I'd like to. Yeah, for sure. We, we, we can do. I'm going to continue struggling with, with this uh, this this blog. But like I say, I, mean, I, I don't know why I bother, really, because I know what the filters are like and all the rest of it. Um, it's... Uh, yeah, well, no, oh, it's, 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 it's fine. There's, there's, really. there's lots. Yeah, no, there's lots of good reasons for you to do it, and I'm glad that you t you keep me informed about what you're doing as well. <laughs> yeah, 
Oh well, I you know, it's uh, it's nice to share my pain. <laughs> well, I'm sure I've said the same to you myself. So uh, good stuff. Yeah. Take care, man. Talk soon. All right. Cheers, Ranger, and take care. Bye.